What is up guys, James Carter TV here for yet another one of my 2016 NFL Draft scouting reports. And today we're looking at Clemson cornerback Mackenzie Alexander. This is a guy that has risen up over the process heading up into this 2016 NFL Draft process. Because this is a guy that was a redshirt sophomore. And this is a guy that a lot of people were not expecting to come out this year. But he surprised a lot of us coming out, entering this 2016 NFL Draft. And I think he should have stayed in school. But I'm going to get into why in this scouting report as I give you his strengths, his weaknesses. I'll give you my pro comparison as well as where he fits best. And finally, my prospect grade. Now, let's start with the strengths. Number one, he has good athleticism. I mean, this is a guy that you can see displays a good amount of speed, acceleration, a nice uh, bit of explosiveness and agility. Can stay with pretty much every corner or, or every wide receiver, excuse me, in the NFL. He's never going to be, uh, you know, absolutely burned uh, due to athleticism. Now, due to other factors, yes, but he can, in terms of just staying with the faster wide receivers like an Antonio Brown and staying with those type of agile guys. He's a guy that you know athletically won't have problems with that. Next, he shows promising man coverage potential. Now, a lot of people would already like to put this, uh, put his man coverage abilities as a strength. I'm not gonna quite do that. I don't think he's very good in man coverage right now. For college, I thought he was good. In the NFL, I think he might struggle. So I, I'm, I'm really gonna put this as main, uh, as man coverage potential. Zone coverage, he has his issues, and we'll get into that later. But I think he shows good potential. Again, as I'm about to go to my next strength here, fluid hips. He has a nice back pedal. Pretty solid techniques right now. It needs some refining, needs some coaching up. But I think there's a lot of tools to work with here for Mackenzie Alexander. This is a guy that only played two years in college. Now, you can say he played three years as a redshirt, you know, freshman, whatever. But, I mean, really, we're talking about a guy that only in terms of playing time, only played two years against other competition in college. So, he has some nice tools, but he needs some refining and I wish I could tell you more, but that's pretty much it. Now, a lot of people are stuck on these strengths. They're finding more strengths within these strengths, and they're telling you, oh, he's going to be so good. Let me get into the weaknesses and why I'm not very excited about this prospect. Number one, he is non-existent against the run. Zero. Now, you will be able to pull up an occasional play, like one against NC State, and then one against uh, maybe North Carolina, and you'll say, James, no, look, he does do something against the run. Look, he blew up this play in the run game. And then that'll be all you'll be able to find. There were three plays out of every game I watched of this kid where he did anything against the run. But more often than not, he is nowhere near the play. And even, if, and even if he's near the play, he won't do anything about it. I mean, And especially when we're talking about comparing him with Vernon Hargraves, who is projected to be in the same range of the draft as Mackenzie Alexander. Mackenzie Alexander cannot even compare to Vernon Hargraves in the run game. Vernon Hargraves, I know if I'm an NFL head coach, if I'm a GM, what have you. If I have Vernon Hargraves on that side of the field and a running back tries to run on that side of the field, I know Vernon Hargraves is going to give it all he can to stop this running back from bursting out and getting extra yardage. I cannot say the same about Mackenzie Alexander. A lot of times he doesn't even know there's a run play going on. He'll be running uh, the other way as there's a, clearly a run uh, going on on this play to his side of the field. And the wide receiver can't even believe it. So they're just going to like, I don't know, I guess I'll follow you. I'm not blocking you. I'm blocking you with my mind, I guess, because you still believe there's a pass play. A lack of awareness when it comes to the run game. Stopping the run. This is a guy. He had 23 tackles this season. And he played in, I believe, 11 and a half games. He lost uh, you know, half of the game against Alabama. Um, he, he got injured in that game against Alabama. He, he missed a couple games as well, but he played in at least 10 and a half games this season. Only had 23 tackles. And uh, you can imagine uh, a good percentage, 60%, 70% were of those tackles were on wide receivers. This is not a guy that you can expect to be involved in the run game at all. And that's fine if you're going to be a shutdown corner. But is he going to be a shutdown corner or is he just going to be okay? Let's move on to the next weakness. Poor production. 
Again, this goes to the tackles, and now we're talking about the pass defenses and the interceptions. Not an interception. Not one interception in the 2015 season. I'm not sure he had one in the 2014 season either. Not really, didn't really put himself in a position to get a lot of them. And when we're talking about Jalen Ramsey, another defensive back that is considered to be a top 10 prospect, Jalen Ramsey had a lack of interceptions this year, but I defend him because I did not see instances where Jalen Ramsey could have even picked off many passes. There were plenty of instances where McKenzie Alexander should have had interceptions. And it has a lot to do with the fact that he doesn't have great awareness when it comes to what is the quarterback doing. He doesn't know how to look with his eyes like Vernon Hargraves does so good at looking at the quarterback with his eyes, being able to pre uh, to predict and, and see where the quarterback is going to go with the football, being able to intercept those points, those angles, get interceptions. Mackenzie Alexander does a great job of looking at the wide receiver, does a pretty good job of looking at the wide receiver and mirroring the wide receiver. But in terms of an elite trait, and that maybe not even elite, but just a, a good trait to have, a trait that you should have as an NFL cornerback when we're talking about you possibly being a number one cornerback in the NFL, being able to look at the quarterback and see where is this guy going to go and be able to pick off. Your only chance here is if he's marrying a, a cornerback or wide receiver. He always has his, head, uh, his eyes on the wide receiver. He's not going to look behind him until the very last moment. And then when he looks around at the very last moment, it's there. I mean, besides that, you're not going to get any intercessions from Mackenzie Alexander, and it's very unfortunate, and I think that's a big issue and a big problem for me. His age. Now, you're wondering, what? He's a redshirt sophomore. He's, I mean, no one's really that old. He's 22. Who cares? Now, here's a big problem for me. If you're 22, I'm not saying that's a problem. Because you've played four years in college. So, even though you're 22, congratulations, you played four years of college, you have a lot of experience, you're ready for the NFL. Now, we have a weird case where this guy is old for, I mean, going to the NFL, he's 22, and he's not experienced. So, we're taught, he only played two years in college. So, how many years is he going to finally reach his potential? Two, three years when he's 25? He only has four good years left. So the combination of inexperience and age here is an issue for me, and that's why I believe he came out, because he didn't want to be 23 years old going in the NFL, and he's going to turn, by the way, 23 in November. He didn't want to be 23 playing in college and then going to the NFL and then turning 24 his rookie year. Well, now you're going to turn 23 your rookie year, and you're still going to be pretty clueless as to what you're doing. The age is a problem for me. In terms of age versus experience, that's a problem. And then inconsistency, sometimes this guy, he, he has poor balance, he has, uh, his techniques can go away from him from time to time. It, it, not a very consistent prospect at all, unless if we're talking about his uh, poor ability versus the run. And then even then it's not consistent because, again, as I said, he had a nice play against NC State where he recognized, um, I'm not even sure if it was a run play, it may have been a screen. So I think it was a screen where you recognize, okay, this is a screen, uh, but you really don't see this a lot. A lot of times he gets fooled, he gets tricked, inconsistent prospect, not great awareness at all for me. I get why some people like him. He shows nice traits and abilities athletically. He showed at games to have a nice ability to even shut down. Uh, potential mates. Uh, Sterling Shepard out of Oklahoma had his issues when facing Mackenzie Alexander. But, man, I'm not in love with this guy. And I think if you draft this guy wanting him to be your number one quarterback, I think you're going to have issues. Number two, okay, now we can start to have a conversation. I say he's an average starter. I give him a grade of 78 now, if he goes to the combine, I really want to look at his drills. I really want to see more of this guy in terms of his hips, in terms of his back pedal. But the awareness, the non-existence against the run, is he really that good in coverage? They worry me. I give him a grade of 78. I think he may be a starter. I think he may be a number two corner for not a very good team. I, would, I wouldn't draft him until the second round. He'll be drafting the first. He'll be drafting the top 10 to Miami. But if Miami drafts him, I don't think you find your number one corner. I think you still have to look for a good number one corner because this guy's going to have his issues early and often. Until Oh, and also, let me give you my pro comparison and my best fit. I almost ended the video. All right, so my best fit here. 
I like him in New Orleans, where Keenan Lewis and Delvin Bro currently reside. That's not going to be... A, that way, he won't be forced to be a, a big guy now. Now, Keenan Lewis will be out of the door probably after 2015. Uh, 2016, excuse me. So, he can move into that role, and I think Delvin Bro can actually be a number one cornerback for you. So, Mackenzie Alexander has a year to develop, and then you can plug him in there as your number two guy. Uh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, they really don't have an M1 corner right now, so this is kind of, uh, but uh, Pittsburgh, they have a nice ability to develop guys, not necessarily cornerbacks, but develop talent defensively, so I would like him in Pittsburgh. Seattle, I think this might be really good. They they know, for some reason, they know how to just build up cornerbacks. I mean, they, they've been doing it. So all these issues I'm talking about is non-existence versus the run, what have you, blah, 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 his poor aware, awareness. They'll coach that up, and they'll get it into a system, and you won't see that to be a problem. And then Kansas City, you have Marcus Peters, who you drafted last year. Sean Smith probably out of the door. Marcus Peters can be your number one. This guy can be your number two. Nice duo there. Pro comparison. He could be anywhere from Aqib Talib, who a lot of people think is a shutdown corner. He's not. He's a guy that he does okay in man coverage most of the time. Um, but not, I mean, Aqib Talib is fine. He's not, a, he's not a great number one corner. He's not even a number one corner for uh, Denver right now. Or he, his lower end, Cody Sensabaugh. And you're like, who is that? Um, he's a Tennessee Titans cornerback, and we've known him for years now. A guy that has nice athleticism, can mirror a lot of guys, but for some reason cannot turn his head to the freaking behind him to see what's coming his way, cannot intercept balls worth a damn, cannot do anything against the run. I think this could be more of what I'm talking about. But as best he could be a keep to leap. I think that's a possibility. Even a keep to leave, you're not in love with him being your number one cornerback. Well, at least I'm not. So there you go, Mackenzie Alexander. Until next time, James Carter TV. I'm out. Peace.